At the beginning of the month, the state legislature approved a bill to raise New York's minimum wage from $9 an hour to as much as $15 an hour. But that all depends on where in New York you live. Workers living upstate will only reach $12.50 an hour, and that increase won't be final until 2021. The wage increase was hailed as a victory by labor unions and organizers of the cause. However, for some low-wage earners and small business owners, the pay increase comes with uncertainty and anxiety. It's gone up slowly to where now it's $1,000 a month for just this. Jackie Jordan shares this single motel room with her husband and two cats off Central Avenue in the Albany suburb of Colony. It's all just like my closet, bedroom, kitchen, living room. Jordan, originally from Iowa, moved to Schenectady 20 years ago to meet her husband's family. When her car was stolen, she became an unexpected permanent resident. Without a formal degree, she took an entry-level job with McDonald's. I'm 50, and I'm proud to say it. I mean, I wish I had gotten a better job, but I didn't finish my education, so I'm paying the price for it. When Jordan heard a better paying position opened up at a McDonald's in Colony, she and her husband moved to the Best Value Inn Motel. Her current wage is $9.75 an hour, and she brings home about $189 a week. And my rent's $2.50 a week, so I'm having to beg and borrow all over the place and don't know who, how I'm going to pay them back. It would seem that Jordan would be thrilled about the wage increase, but she says she feels like upstate is being segregated from New York City. And she wrote a message to Governor Cuomo expressing that. I just have to say New York is New York, not segregated by cities, upstate, downstate, left, right. We're all New Yorkers. We all need 15 an hour and we need it now, not from 2018 to whenever. The idea of raising the minimum wage might sound sweet to some, but for some small businesses, like the Ben & Jerry's of Saratoga, it can leave a bitter aftertaste. For a kid to be making $12 or so an hour at age 16, that's pretty decent money. Patrick Pepino is a single business franchisee. His model is seasonal, meaning he has an off-season, pre-season, and in-season staffing levels, which can be as low as eight people in the winter and as high as 50 people in the summer. On this day, the store is holding its annual free cone giveaway. The Ben & Jerry's parent company underwrites the ice cream, and Pepino estimates they serve about 9,000 people throughout the day. It's a marketing ploy, and it's normally not this busy. Hey, could you file around the counter that way if you could? Thank you so much. For him, raising the minimum wage puts his business on shaky ground. The first two years on paper, we can make it. And I actually argued uh, down at the assembly with, with some people saying, look, up to $12 an hour, I'm confident we can make it. It's the $12 to $15 an hour range where things get messy. It's because of testimony from business owners like him that the legislature agreed to slow the growth of the minimum wage upstate. A stopgap was implemented at $12.50 so lawmakers could evaluate the impact of the increased wages against the upstate economy. And then consider if they would continue to raise the wage to $15 or not. I'm happy that the union and the Fight for 15 movement said, hey, look what we did. But five years from now, I hope we don't all look back on them and say, look what you did. Aside from the cost to small businesses, Pepino worries increasing the wages will also increase inflation. That money has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And if everyone suddenly is making $15 an hour, has anything really changed? The $7 hamburger you used to buy is now, you know, eight or $9. Are you gaining any real purchasing power? Hi, there you go. Thank you. If prices increase, he worries that a business like his, which already serves a premium product, would become simply unaffordable. When all is said and done, at the end of the day, big firms, global firms, companies that have huge footprints and lots of capital that do have multi-million dollar CEOs will have more market share than they do now. McMahon says it's the larger firms that would be able to absorb the higher cost of wages, while small business owners will likely be swamped and go under. He suspects the $15 minimum wage was chosen for its convenient alliteration with the word fight, a rally cry for the movement, and he questions the living wage theory behind it. Why stop at 15? Why be a cheapskate? Why not 30? 
I mean, you're actually telling people in those rallies who actually live and work in Manhattan that $15 an hour is going to put them in the middle class. He says if government really wanted to help, they would have expanded the earned income tax credit. It's long overdue because the minimum wage that we have now prior to this legislation is actually lower in real terms than the minimum wage in 1970. Phil Steck, an assemblyman from the Albany area, says adjusted for inflation and the cost of living, the minimum wage should be $15 an hour. If there's more aggregate demand in the economic system, that will drive the economy forward. And that's the theory behind the minimum wage, and that's the theory that I subscribe to. No one really knows the full effect of making the entry-level wage a sustainable one. But for McDonald's grill cook Jackie Jordan, it's the difference between living week to week in a motel and a more permanent arrangement. I would be able to save money and get an apartment and save big money to where I can put aside and have it to fall back on, not just pay my rent and be broke. Jordan says all workers like herself are asking for is a leg up. The first increase to the minimum wage will kick in this year and continue to increase by 70 cents every year, reaching 1250 in 2021. Supporters, including the governor, believe the minimum wage upstate will eventually match the $15 minimum wage New York City will reach by the end of 2018.